Welcome, welcome. For today's video, I'm going to review Super Mario Bros. Super Mario Bros. is a 1993 fantasy adventure film based on the Nintendo series Super Mario. And it was directed by husband and wife duo Rocky Morton and Annabelle Henkel and written by Parker Bennett, Terry Runte, and Ed Solomon. The film is also one of the first live action films based on a video game and it pretty much set the standard for all video game adaptations. Well, until now, that is. And as you can probably guess, I'm doing this because of the new Mario movie, so... Hey, I couldn't resist. Also, we have a special guest today. Uh, you can come in now. Hello, it's -a me, I'm Mario. It is a privilege to be here. Right back at you. So without further ado, let's get into this. So the film begins with the iconic 8-bit Mario theme. Oh boy, I cannot wait to see us in the big screen. Yeah, just wait until you see the rest of the film. Then we are on Earth 65 million years ago, where a meteor split the universe into two parallel dimensions, one where the dinosaurs survived. Then we begin in 1973, where a large egg and a rock are left at a Catholic orphanage. And the egg hatches. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I thought this was a Mario movie, not a Cronenberg movie. Exactly, what the hell is this? Anyways, we fast forward 20 years, and we meet the duo Mario, played by the late great Bob Hopkins, and Luigi, played by John Leguizamo, as they work as broke-ass plumbers in Brooklyn, and Luigi here is just watching whatever's on TV. Oh, Mario, Mario, right now, a miraculous world? This guy just found out that he was in another dimension. never know. The only thing miraculous I know is that we're still eating while wow, we're going broke. Mamma mia, that is supposed to be me and my brother Luigi. They don't even sound like us. Yeah, get used to that. Even the new one doesn't do your iconic accent. And then we meet Daisy, played by Samantha Mantis, an NYU archaeology student who has been excavating dinosaur bones under the Brooklyn Bridge, and she's harassed by Anthony Scalepi, who is also in charge of the construction site there, and he was also putting Mario and Luigi out of business. And in case you're wondering, no, he's not even in the original game. Anyways, we meet more characters from the games, like Iggy and Spike. Yes, that's Iggy, and that's Spike, whatever the hell he is. As they are both stalking Daisy, but they lose her, then she come across Luigi, and Luigi starts hitting on her, but he is bombing hard, so Mario becomes his wingman. What my brother is trying to say is he doesn't know what to say. He doesn't even know how to begin. But he has offered you a ride, and if it would help you out, please, step into the bus. You gotta admit, he's no goose, but he's a decent wingman. So we get a double date with some spaghetti. spaghetti. And we meet Mario's girlfriend, Daniela, played by Dana Kamaneski. And no, she is not from the video games as well. And spoiler alert, Princess Peach isn't in this movie. Mamma mia, why the hell is Princess Peach not in this movie? Hey, don't look at me, I didn't write the fucking thing. Anyways, Daisy reveals that Sclepi's dig team found an element that is the same material the meteorite was made that split parallel dimensions. Also, she is the orphan from the beginning of the film. Mario here brought me up. He's been my, my mother my whole life. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my father. My father. He's been my father, my uncle, my brother, everybody. Also, I don't buy that both Mario and Luigi are brothers in this one because Mario looks older than he does. Later that night, Daniela and Mario take the van back, allowing Luigi to walk Daisy home. But when Mario leaves Daniela, she gets kidnapped by Iggy and Spike. Meanwhile, Daisy shows Luigi the dig site. It's beautiful. You're beautiful. Oh, mamma mia. Look how they massacred my brother, Luigi. Then the duo witnessed some of Scalepi's men sabotaging the dig site by leaving the water pipes open. Luckily, Mario and Luigi fix it. But then Iggy and Spike kidnap Daisy, and Luigi tries to save her, but gets her necklace instead. So the brothers then go through the interdimensional portal to Dino Hatton, which looks like Roger Corman's version of Blade Runner. Oh, and we meet our antagonist, King Koopa, played by the late great Dennis Hopper in his over-the-top glory. While mammals roam free in the other dimension. Well, not for long. 
can now finally be able to merge our world with theirs and get rid of the mammals. And for those who don't know, Koopa is Bowser's original Japanese name. Oh, and this is Lena, played by Fiona Shaw. And as you guessed, that she's not from the original game. Anyways, they're both discussing how pathetic and disgusting their world is, which is why Koopa wants to take over the human world, but he needs the rock that Daisy has. Then, Iggy and Spike show up, reporting that Daisy has been captured, but they don't have the rock. Where is it? The plumbers took it. Plumbers... Plumber alert. Plumber alert. And let me get this straight. He's supposed to be Bowser, and he doesn't look a thing like him. Well, get used to that, Mario. Reality can often be disappointing. Anyways, Mario and Luigi push through a crowd to find Daisy, but they get mugged and the rock is stolen. Oh, and we meet Toad. And yes, that is Toad. Mamma mia, look how they massacred my boy Toad. Then both Toad and the brothers get arrested by the police. Meanwhile, Daisy is taken to a prison room in Koopa's tower, and we see that Daniela and four other women are also inside because Koopa is looking for the princess, but Iggy and Spike took the wrong girls. Anyways, Mario, Luigi, and Toad arrive at the police station. Name, right Mario. Last name, Mario. Okay, what's your name? Luigi. Luigi, Luigi? No, Luigi Mario. And fun fact, Nintendo did confirm that that is indeed their real surnames. So far, that is the only thing they got right. Later on, Koopa visits them, claiming to be a lawyer to trick them into giving him the necklace. However, this attempt fails as both Mario and Luigi don't have it, so Koopa orders them to be taken to the de-evolution chamber. And he uses Toad as an example. De-evolution, of course, works the opposite way. Back to... Simpler forms. Goomba. Okay. And you heard that right. That is a Goomba. Mamma mia. That is not a Goomba. That is an abomination of nature. Luckily, the brothers escape by shoving Koopa into the de-evolution chair and get the hell out of there by stealing a police car, GTA style. And we get a chase scene with the brothers and the police. And this is the closest thing we are getting to Mario Kart. After that chase, the brothers celebrate their victory until they enter a tunnel leading to the Kupahari Desert, which is unfinished, by the way. Back at the tower, Koopa and Lena are enjoying a mud bath together. Do you know what I love about mud? It's clean and it's dirty at the same time. <laughs> I wonder if this is where George Lucas got this line. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating. And it gets everywhere. Anyways, he orders Selena to have Daisy brought to him, while Koopa has both Iggy and Spike locked into the de-evolution machine to evolve them, making them big brain and a big pain in the ass. Transmogrification. More like a, um, transfiguration. Ah, a simple metamorphosis. Hmm. Huh? Enough! If you do not return with the plumbers and the rock, I shall personally kill you. Asshole. Meanwhile, Lena tells Daisy that she is descended from dinosaurs and that she is the long lost princess of this dimension and her father was overthrown by Koopa. Oh, and then we meet Yoshi. And yes, that is Yoshi. Yoshi! Wow! Mamma mia! Look at what they did to my homie Yoshi! Honestly, Mario, compared to the other characters, Yoshi here actually looks decent. Anyways, then we get a scene where Koopa starts hitting on Daisy. She's not gonna lie, is giving me Harvey Weinstein vibes. 
Anyways, back at the desert, Iggy and Spike locate the brothers, and they accidentally drive off a cliff, getting the attention of the Mario brothers. And Iggy and Spike get themselves captured, and reveal the purpose of Daisy's necklace, and Koopa's plan with it. So Luigi offers a trade, the meteorite chart in exchange for Daisy, and both Iggy and Spike agree and drive back to the city to find Big Bertha, who stole the rock from earlier. And we arrive at the Boom Boom Bar where Mario and Luigi find Big Bertha. In the case anyone is wondering what Big Bertha looks like, in the original game, she's a fish. Ah, oh, this is giving me a headache. I need some mushroom lina. Yeah, bring me a bottle, too. Anyways, they find Big Bertha, and Mario tries to seduce her. I'm your main man. Well, that backfired. So Mario tries again, but this time using reverse psychology. And it works. And he ends up dancing with her and snatches Daisy's necklace. What? What the fuck? Oh, and did I forget to mention that this is a kid's movie? However, Lena and a squad of Koopas arrive, so Mario and Luigi book it, but they lose the necklace to Lena. Then Big Bertha helps them out by lending them a pair of Thwomp Stompers, which is the movie's way of explaining Mario's high jumps. Uh, they couldn't even get that one right. Anyways, as they escape, Luigi notices that the fungus gives them a bomb, and uh-oh, they're trapped, so what are they gonna do? A slug jump! Jump! Way to go to Cooper Tower. Wanna wait for a bus? And yes, they jumped into the trash, which is pretty much how this movie was disposed after release. Anyways, the sludge culper dumps its load along with Mario and Luigi outside Koopa's tower. Then they sneak into the tower and start messing with the pipes to freeze the tower from inside. And as they head to the elevator, they finally get their iconic drip. Well, at least they finally got that right. Well, it's about the fucking a time. However, the elevator gets packed in by a bunch of Goombas, and the brothers manage to hide behind the Goombas by making them dance. And surprisingly enough, it works. What the hell was that? Meanwhile, Lena tries to kill Daisy, but luckily Daisy gets saved by the homie Yosh. Meanwhile, in the hallway, Daisy runs into Toad, carrying her a plate of steamed vegetables, and runs away before encountering two Goombas escorting Iggy and Spike. And the Goombas set Toad on fire. Luckily, Daisy finds a fire extinguisher and puts out Toad, and Iggy and Spike switch sides to help Daisy. And they show her that the fungus is her father. Hey, consider yourself lucky you don't look like a Cronenberg abomination. Anyways, Mario and Luigi finally reunite with Daisy, and she introduces them to her father. So yeah, say hi to your future in-law. Daisy then tells Mario that Daniela is also held prisoner in the barracks, so he quickly dashes away to save her. However, Luigi and Daisy get captured again by Koopa and his Goombas. Meanwhile, Mario helps the women escape down the frozen pipe by using a mattress, which, not gonna lie, looks like fun. <laughs> You know, I just uh, realized something. Why couldn't they make those uh, pipes so green? Anyways, they crash land into the street and reunite with Luigi and Daisy. And we get our final duel between Mario and Koopa. Also, Lena, who has gone rogue, gets fucking electrocuted but survives. Until she tries to merge the dimensions and dies for real. Anyways, Koopa and Mario continued their fight on the catwalk until Mario pulls out a bomb causing mass panic and even scaring the shit out of Koopa. <laughs> then Mario and Koopa start to disappear as the dimensions merge. I 
That one didn't age quite so well. Yeah, so now Mario and Koopa and his Goombas appear in the human world. And Koopa tries to blast Mario with the de-evolution gun, but he dodges it. Monkey. Meanwhile, Luigi and Daisy manage to remove the shard from the meteor, causing the two dimensions to separate once more. And the bob from earlier is still walking and finally explodes, shooting Koopa into the air and landing him in an empty vat. Suddenly, Koopa now is in his T-Rex form. Oh, bitch, please, I can do that shit too. Then the Mario brothers shoot him, further de-evolving Koopa into a glop of primeval slime. And the day is saved. Meanwhile, Daisy's father is restored to his former self. Oh, and by the way, his name is Bowser. I'm not joking. You got to be a fucking kidding me. Anyways, Daisy reopens the portal to send the Mario Brothers home, and she tells Luigi that she has to stay to restore Dino Hatton and get to reunite with her father, but not without a goodbye kiss. That is touching. Truly it is, but it's making me sick. Anyways, it's three weeks later and Daniela has now moved in with the Mario Brothers and prepares them dinner. Just as Luigi stands up to join them, the show Our Miraculous World comes on with the host discussing the Mario Brothers. I call them the Super Mario Brothers. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! Then Daisy shows up asking Mario and Luigi for help. What, what, what's wrong? You're never gonna believe this. I believe it. You? <laughs> I believe. And we get a post credit scene. Very exciting proposal. A video game based on your many adventures. What would you call it? Iggy's World. The Indomitable Spike. The Super Koopa Cousins. And that was Super Mario Brothers. The film was a critically and commercial bomb. And hell, even Nintendo hated it, so much so that they didn't allow any of their other properties to be adapted into live action until Pokemon Detective Pikachu in 2019. Despite being considered as one of the worst films ever made, the Super Mario Brothers developed a cult following over the years, and in 2012, a webcomic sequel was produced in collaboration with one of the writers, Parker Bennett. So with that out of the way, what do I think of it? Well, where do I fucking start? This movie's one hell of a mess. I just got a fucking headache trying to follow the plot. Hell, even the actors didn't know what the fuck was going on and didn't even enjoy making it. So much so that both Bob Hopkins and John Leguizamo drank before takes. And according to them, the inconsistency is because the husband and wife directors didn't exactly see eye to eye with everything in this film. And how it deviates from the source material. And yeah, speaking of the source material, how the fuck did they manage to fuck that up? I mean, seriously, they couldn't even get the bare minimum accurate. Out of all the cast, the only ones I gave a shit about were Mario, Luigi, Daisy, and Koopa. Honestly, Bob Hopkins and John Leguizamo did a decent job as them. Hell, even Samantha Mantis was at least okay in this one. But I gotta say, the one that got the most laughs out of me was fucking Dennis Hopper. Because I love me some Dennis Hopper overacting. Plumbers. Plumber alert. See you later, alligator. Goomba. Go Goomba! I'll kill that plumber! Oh, no. Poor people are crazy, Jack. I'm eccentric. I'm gonna cut open his head and I'm gonna eat his brain. You think he'd like that? Heineken! Fuck that shit! Pap's Blue Ribbon! And I gotta say, at least the practical effects look great. I mean, look at Yoshi, even though he's not accurate to the source material, he's at least a decent special effect. Not to mention the production value is decent. But anyways, what do you think about this, Mario? Honestly, this movie's a piece of shit. Uh, look how they disrespected me. Okay, so overall, this film is pretty bad, but not as bad as everybody says. Compared to the other video game adaptations I've seen, this one's mid at best. So honestly, if you want to see a live-action version of the Super Mario Bros, I would stick with the Super Mario Super Show. Thank you very much. Trouble, you can call us on the double. We're faster than the others, you'll be hooked on the brothers. 
So I give it two and a half mushrooms out of five. And I give this movie five shits out of five. And that was the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this. Stay safe out there. And you want to end this for me, Mario? Say it no more, Luigi. Yeah. Spit us some bars. Okay, dokie. <coughs> The name Luigi, but you could call me L Dog. You wanna borrow money, motherfucker? Hell no. Nah. I got a little secret that I need to tell y'all. Peach stay on the dilt, got the bitch on call. Five, five, five. Peach bitch ass. I headed in the castle cause this bitch is rich ass. Fuck, she put 22s on my truck. Mario is missing and I don't give a fuck. Mixtape coming, 3022. And when my shit drop, I don't wanna see you. Bitch, stop crying, talking about some boo hoo. You just mad cause I don't wanna do you Pulse If you a dude Let's go shit Monkey <laughs> What the hell y'all waiting on? Get a shit a light As long as y'all do that there will be alright So trust your boy right here You motherfuckers better feel Cause I ain't playing no games Well, except for this one here Give the shit, yeah A thumbs up, sleep for your boy Okay, okay, bye